Are you upgraded to Photoshop 2020? Maybe some tools are missing or some things are not working the way you might expect. Well, this video is going to show how to fix all the bugs and little idiosyncrasies with Photoshop 2020. Hey Cafe Crew, it's Colin Smith here from PhotoshopCafe.com. And I just want to make this quick video because Photoshop 2020 came out last week and I posted a few tutorials and I've been reading the comments and it seems like there's a few kind of like hiccups or things that people have been facing. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm just going to go in here and we're going to solve all the issues that I've seen that people have had online. Now, of course, if you have any issues that I'm not addressing here, just drop a comment underneath and myself or if you're watching and uh, feel free to respond to those. So anyway, let's just get started. All right, so the first thing that people have been saying is that when they go down here, like right now, here I am in Photoshop 2020, and look at this, the quick selection tool is there, but where is the new object selection tool? So here's the thing, when you updated Photoshop, you had the option to remove the preferences file. So what's happened here is that you've picked up the old preferences file from the old version of Photoshop, and because of that, it's showing the toolbar settings that were there on the previous version before object selection existed. So the ways to address this is two ways. One is if you want to go and just kind of manually do it, go under here, click on there, you'll see the object selection tool exists right there. Just choose on edit toolbar. Then you'll see it's an extra tool, same with the frame tool. And all you need to do here is just restore defaults, click done and the object selection tool is there and also our frame tool. So the other way to address this is to reset your preferences. This would also address some of the things with the styles and things like that, not necessarily looking the way they should. All right, so the way to do that is to just quit Photoshop right now. And by the way, if you wanna click here on the updates, this will update and show you the latest drop of Photoshop. And there's actually been a new drop come out in the last couple of days, so I would definitely recommend updating that. Now, here's how you set your prefs. Go down to your Photoshop where you're going to launch it. Hold Shift Option Command, and that would be Shift Alt Control on Windows. Click that while to launch it while holding these down. And you'll get this option here, delete the Adobe Photoshop settings file. Click Yes. And now it's going to do a clean, fresh install of Photoshop. And you're going to start from the very beginning. All right, so let's just uh, just create a new document so we can go in past the screen. And by the way, if you don't like that splash screen, you can avoid it, and I'll show you how to do that. Just simply go under the Photoshop Preferences, go under General, turn off Auto Show the Home Screen, and then just click OK. So that means now when I close this, I don't get that home screen. So now I've got the uh, regular Photoshop, if you'd like to work that way. So let's just quickly open something right now. And one of the other issues that some people have been encountering is when you're working with the gradient tool. When you click here and you want to create a custom gradient, meaning you click on there, that's the color stop, and then you click on the color, you select the color, and then you click there, you select another color. Some people have been encountering a freeze where you just get the spinning beach ball of death. The way to get around that is to go under Photoshop, go under the preferences, go down to performance. Then under performance, what you want to do is turn on legacy compositing. And this will actually resolve that problem for you. Now, what I would suggest is you keep your eye out for an update when an update arrives, update that version. And by the way, there's an update right now, so it might actually fix it. You might want to test that. And once you've got it going, you know, just turn that legacy compositing back off. But that's also a way of fixing a lot of display issues and different things like that that can happen too. Another thing I've been hearing from people is, you know, where have all my patterns and stuff gone? Like right now, I've just got tree, grass, and water. Where's my bubble blue? I'm, I'm kidding about that. But where is everything? Well, if you go into any of these panels, click on that little menu here, go down to legacy patterns and more. Now, what's really important is and more, because if we twirl this open and have a look, you'll see here's our legacy patterns. So here's all the patterns that were in here before. Let me just drag this out so you can see it. 
So they're all there and all you need to do is hit the control, hold down control or command, click on that arrow and you can open it and look, there's all our patterns. There's my custom ones that I made and then there's more. In fact, if I make it wider, it's probably easier to see. There we go. But there's another one. If you look on here, 2019 patterns, there's actually not just trees, grass and water. There's a whole bunch of other ones here. So check those out. And the same thing goes for things like if we go under windows here and we bring out our shapes. Same thing here goes for the shapes. Also our gradients. You can see there's the shapes. You, you probably recognize some of these. They've been there forever, right? So there's my custom shapes. And if I close that out, just go under here and then just choose to legacy shapes and more. And then if you go down here, you'll see, you know, here's all the new ones that came, the leaves, the wild animals, boats, flowers. But if you go under legacy, once again, you'll see 2019 shapes. And if you click on these, you'll see there's a whole bunch of new ones. Okay, so there's our trees, flowers, you know, emojis, all kinds of things. And of course, all the original ones will be under legacy. There we go. So that's how you can get all of those back. Um, same thing goes for gradients. You know, I've got all your basics and all those kinds of things there. And you can load up your legacy gradients and you'll find all of them there as well. Now, one of the things I did do here, you can drag these around. Here's a little extra tip. You might find when you open your gradients, and it doesn't matter so much there, but if you go to do something like, say for example, let me just, say for example, I wanna do something on here and I'm working on a layer style. And then I choose, you know, hey, I wanna do a gradient. And you notice if you go up the top here to select them, there's nothing at the very top. You've gotta to go under the basics all the time. So here's a little tip. I chose under the basics, let me just cancel that. Under basics, I selected these. These are foreground and background, foreground to transparent, black to white. These are your basic gradients. Just click and drag them out to the top like that. And now if I go to apply a gradient or work in them anyway, when we go under here, you'll notice now that at the top, there's our foreground and background, foreground to transparent, black to white. So that's our essential, you know, bread and butter gradients that are right there and easy to access. Uh, another thing worth addressing is your plugins. So with the new version of 2020, it's going to blow out your plugins. The reason for this is this is a full version. It's not an incremental update. So when you do your incremental updates, you know, throughout the year, your plugins and everything should be fine. But when it does a full build like this, you know, usually around this time of the year, around the time of Adobe Max, they do a dot release, you know, so when it went from CC 2019 to Photoshop 2020, this is a complete new version. It's not going to use the plugins. The reason for that is because the plugins might not be compatible. It's up to the individual plugin manufacturers to make sure that they've updated them to be compatible with Photoshop. Imagine if Photoshop decided, hey, we want to be, you know, compatible with every plugin. That would be like making a new iPhone and, you know, the iPhones made by Apple, for example. And then as a case, maybe in case made a case. And then they decided, hey, we're going to make a new iPhone, but we're going to make sure that it always fits this accessory. It always fits this case. Well, imagine how engineering, you know, they wouldn't be able to change the size of it. They wouldn't be able to make them thinner. There's a lot of things they couldn't do just to fit an accessory. Well, a plugin is an accessory. And so Photoshop has to concentrate on what they need to do, or Adobe needs to concentrate on what they need to do to make the software as good as they can. So they wanna focus on updates and making it fast, efficient, changing sometimes core engines or core compositing engines like they have right now in this version of 2020. There's a new core compositing engine, there's a new AI. Um, so a lot of things have kind of changed as um, Adobe's trying to make it better. So the plugin manufacturer, of course, then has to make sure that they are gonna work with Photoshop. So just go ahead and reinstall your plugins. You'll find that some of your plugins will work and you might have some that won't. Go to the manufacturer's website of that plugin and it should be an update. If not, they should have a date of when that update's gonna be there. Now, the other thing worth mentioning too, is when you install Photoshop 2020, you have the option to remove the old version or keep it. And one of the things I always do when I update is keep the old version because Photoshop CC 2019 and Photoshop 2020 can run side by side. You can have them both on the machine at the same time. So that means if there's plugins that you really need that are not gonna work inside of Photoshop 2020, 
all you need to do is just launch Photoshop 2019, or CC 2019 and then run all your plugins and everything should work just like it did before. And then when you've got everything working nicely and 2020 is working exactly where you want it, then you could remove Photoshop CC 2019. Another thing worth considering too is migrating your presets. So one of the things you can do is when you're inside of Photoshop, if you go under here and you go down to your presets, you'll see we have the option to import and export presets. So we can see, you know, here's our custom shapes, workspaces, all that kind of stuff. We can export those and then we can go in here and import the ones we've done. The other thing we can do too is if you look under the presets, and that's under edit presets, preset manager, and this will bring you to the individual presets here. Now, because I'm in Photoshop 2020, we see contours and tools, and a lot of the other ones have been moved because now we've got the gradients, we've got the shapes, we've got all of those now inside of their own panels. So let me just go here. I'm gonna launch Photoshop CC 2019. Look at this, I've got 2020 running, and I'm launching 2019 at the same time. So if you go under here and we go under edits and we go to presets, look at the preset manager here. Notice we have a lot more presets. So here's all our presets there. So say for example, you know, hey, I've got my brushes. I really love my brushes. This is the column two. I'm going to save that set of brushes. And I'm just going to call it Collins B for brush. Well, that works. And just hit save. Done. Now, if I was to go to Photoshop 2020, okay, so here I am in 2020, but this time, instead of going into the preset manager, I can go into the individual panels. So let me go into my brushes here. So here's my brushes panel. And I want the column brushes. They're actually already in here. They came in by default. But if they didn't, I could choose here and I would import brushes. And then I would go to my folder that I exported them to. And there's my brushes and I would click open. And now I could get all my brushes. And then the same goes for the other presets, you know, such as shapes and different things like that. So when you install the 2020, it should pick those up. And if it doesn't, just go back into 19, export them out, and then um, bring them in into 2020. So that's kind of how you can work with the two side by side. So anyway, so this is just a quick little update, not necessarily a tutorial, but more of a, hey, here's, here's what's happening in Photoshop right now. If you'd like to see more of these kind of videos, let me know in the comments underneath. And if you're new here to Photoshop Cafe, consider subscribing. You'll get a new tutorial from me at least once a week. And what you want to do is just ring that little notification bell, enable those notifications, so you know when I upload a new video, which is once a week, usually every Tuesday. So anyway, guys, if you like this, smash the like button, and until next time, I'll see you at the cafe.